Hi, this is your Sapil Bharti and welcome to TFR Let's Talk. And today we have with us Yaniv Ben Khayem, co-founder and CEO of Memphis Dev. Yaniv, it's great to have you on the show. Thank you very much. Great to be here. It's my pleasure to host you today. I would love to know uh, the story of the company. So uh, talk a bit about uh, what led to the creation of the company, what problem you're trying to solve for the whole ecosystem. Data streaming in general is, is hard uh, and, and, and a complicated domain and within it, uh, there is uh, one major component that really the engine behind data streaming and, and a key component in the data engineering landscape, which is a message broker. It started from asynchronous communication or enablement for asynchronous communication between microservices. And today it's really uh, the backbone and the engine behind all of the real-time data streaming, event streaming, real-time processing, real-time pipelines uh, that, that, that we are uh, that we know today um, and we thought that the current landscape, the current technologies uh, that the market offers us uh, today as developers and data architects and data engineers don't really make sense uh, for us and, 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 and really reveal uh, multiple challenges like management overhead and scalability and, and uh, hard troubleshooting, observability is, is really difficult. Uh, to get when you're working in an asynchronous uh, and in a high velocity uh, data streaming environment. So we thought that it's time to disrupt this industry uh, and rebuild um, a, a new one from the ground up. And when you talk about streaming data or real time data, what are the either industries or use cases uh, they leverage? Because it's not like real time is for every use case. I mean, of course, ideally we want that. But what are the specific use cases or industries that look at streaming or you know real time data? It really, really built out of multiple factors, um, not necessarily just uh, for a specific use case, but. Um, we definitely see a lot of the use cases or the processing that we did using batch methodologies, moving or switching, transforming into a more streaming method methodologies due to the growth of data. Um, we also see a lot of um, use cases that are built out of event-driven architecture, both because of the economic environment. Um, we want to utilize resources only when some events happen and we need to trigger some action based on that and not just keep some server or resources alive and waiting for some event to happen. Um, and the third part, I think, is that we want to move fast. We want to learn fast. We want to learn our ML models um, uh, faster than um, learning a batch of data and then run the, the training on that. Um, we want faster responses and we want faster answers. So I think that real time is um, a combination of all, all of all of those situations and, and, and factors in the industry and in the world. You folks started an open source project in April. Uh, before we talk about that specific project, I also want to talk a bit about uh, when you look at Memphis Dev, how important is open source for you folks? I always start by saying that we are an open source first company, an open source first product. Um, we grew from the open source, we helped different open source in the past, we were contributors for different open source projects, so it was really naturally uh, for us to open our core product uh, for the community. Um, it's also allowing us or enabling us to grow out of the community and not just based on our co-founders mind and vision, but um, into that comes uh, the entire community and contributors uh, that surrounding Memphis. So. Um, that's a very a core belief within our company and our product itself. Um, and I definitely recommend it for every product to at least take some portion of it and, and give it back to the community and let it uh, expand by it. Now let's talk about the open source project Memphis that you folks uh, announced or started in April. So we released, uh, we released our GA version on April. Um, and in the past, we released a beta version on May 2022 and the GA came out on April uh, 23, uh, 2023. And uh, yeah, we, we had uh, up until today uh, above 80 contributors, um, over 5,000 deployments, um, 2.7k stars on GitHub. So uh, the developer and the data engineering community is really showing love to 
to Memphis Dev and showing uh, its support, and probably we're solving uh, some some critical pain points that the current uh, uh, that the current community have. Um, and and yeah, and above that, I think the the first and and most important metric uh, that we were able to gather by the community until today is that the time to success um, of Memphis of using Memphis from deployment to data ingestion, which for us is like the most critical um, KPI that we measure is on average five minutes, which is um, really disruptive and, 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 and change everything uh, that we were familiar today with regard to data streaming and other message brokers. Now, when we look at open source pro projects or op any open source code base, uh, it's great. It, it helps with uh, day one. You can get started with it, but the real challenge starts on day two when not only you need you may need support, you need update, you may upgrade, you need additional features, and not every company can afford to have developers who have you know inside out understanding of the project. That's when uh, a lot of commercialization or support uh, behind that open source project comes uh, at play. Uh, so talk a bit about what you folks are doing to kind of uh, support this project so users can use it knowing that there's a throat to choke? Yeah, so we uh, usually when we work with event streaming or event streaming at scale, event processing, day one operations is usually the management overhead, the maintenance, uh, the scalability, the observability, the client responsibility for everything, the wrappers that we need to build. Uh, but when we switch to a managed version of event streaming or a message broker, usually the day one operations is out of the way. Uh, but then you basically need to worry about the day two operation. And the day two operation is really the reason why we brought um, message broker into our, our environment in the first place, to build some real-time use case, to build some streaming pipeline, um, to actually do something for our product or our infrastructure with the message broker itself. And that's really the magic of Memphis, I would say, on the day two operations. Definitely on the day one, zero operations, everything come out of the box. Um, but the day two operations is where the magic and, and, and the differentiator of Memphis comes into the play uh, because basically everything is in bed. Um, or all the features that you need in order to build streaming pipelines and real-time features are embedded within the platform itself. And instead of you adapting yourself and your application uh, to your event streaming uh, platform, basically Memphis uh, do it for you and adapt um, itself to your application. You folks are also uh, announcing Memphis Cloud. Uh, talk a bit about, uh, once again, how this is going to help customers to leverage some of these open source technologies. And once again, they should focus on their own business, not worry too much about this plumbing, you know? Exactly. I mean, worry about uh, extracting value and extracting insights and, and pouring data to wherever it needs to, to reach and less about the engineering and, as you said, the plumbing behind. Uh, that's definitely the core value of, of Memphis. And above that, developer experience, ease of use, uh, and really helping developers to reach uh, the day to operation or reach production uh, super fast and in a reliable manner, definitely. Um, another thing that I usually uh, like to add in regard to Memphis, because usually we like to categorize uh, products and uh, we call ourselves, for example, an alternative. An alternative usually means we're replacing something. So we not necessarily need to replace uh, your existing event streaming uh, technology, for example, Kafka or others. We can definitely, and we're already doing it with multiple enterprises and customers, um, we co-live next to your existing event streaming platform um, or message broker, and we really enrich or bring the day two operations that I talked about, that Memphis uh, is so great about, uh, and augment existing event streaming platforms and really take the day two operations out of Memphis and put it on top of an existing technologies. Can you talk about some of the core features, components of Memphis Cloud? Memphis functions, uh, Memphis connectors, and uh, multi-tenancy to support all of the um, SaaS platforms and SaaS architectures uh, that really uh, 
ask for a true multi-tenant environment uh, and it would be able to support uh, their massive scale up until 65,000 tenants per account. Uh, so that, that, that is a huge and, and highly requested feature uh, by the industry. Um, last but not least, the multi-cloud approach. I think that after AI, the next innovation in the industry, uh, in the tech industry would be, or the next big movement would be multi-cloud strategy and multi-cloud uh, approach. And uh, it's one of the biggest challenges, definitely when you're talking about data streaming and, and, and data in massive scale. And, and Memphis is going to enable that uh, with its cloud uh, by, by day one. There are certain use cases, it could be security or depending on, you know, today we live in a data-driven world, but uh, how much demand do you see is there or you feel that a lot of industry, they should be leveraging streaming data because we are all collecting a lot of data, but we need to extract value from it. Uh, where, where, where do you see we are when it comes to stream data and maturity of the ecosystem and the industry, understanding education? Actually, more than ever. Um, it's really interesting to see the changes um, over the course of the last two years. Um, we saw a huge boom and explosion in the industry in, in regard to data management and data movement and data governance and data quality. And, and um, I think that the outcome that we see today uh, because of uh, this, the, the advancement and, and the movement that we, that we had in the, uh, in the data domain um, was really the enabler for what we see today as uh, AI and ChatGPT and all of the other uh, machine learning uh, machine learning functions and, and implementations. Uh, so I think that we should only see it grows um, and and definitely get more uh, variants out of it. So definitely that's uh, that's the golden age for uh, for data right now. You folks just came out with Mephis Cloud announcement today, but if I can ask you, what are the things that you are folks are working on that or we should be looking for? Hey, these are the things we can expect from Mephis this year. We cannot uh, reveal it yet, but definitely we're going to do uh, or we're going to bring a game changing feature um, into stream processing that will combine AI into it um, that will if if we talked about an average time of five minutes, uh, from deployment to success or to data ingestion. Um, so we're talking about fewer minutes than that uh, with greater outcome and, and greater insights uh, out of the stream data. So um, wor worth waiting. Excellent. Yeah, I look forward to chatting with you about that. Um, Yaniv, thank you so much for taking time out today. And of course, uh, Taco Netflix, also uh, the larger, you know, streaming data whole ecosystem. Thanks for sharing those insights. And I would love to chat with you again when you come up with, you know, announcement that you just mentioned. Thank you. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. It was a pleasure.